You're in the channels palette and you're doing a channel. I'm wondering where you're going. <laughs> I'm with thinking this. he's going. I'm what? No, composite no, no. Or you will see it live. But a seriously I, good bass songs I and we stuff. I'm sorry. See, you, see Mark. He's talking now. So I'm, I'm looking at our director and he has a, a head set of headphones over his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a good, that's that's not a good sign. Well, I think for Everything's him, going great. he's looking at it like, hey, the, the cameras are working, the audio is working, but nobody's hearing anything. All right, so we'll have to make he's up some questions. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. All right, he turned the camera over to Jason. All right, well, that's good. Okay, so uh, so Mark, how are things? Good. I'm, uh, I'm, how's the weather here in Florida? <laughs> it's hot and sticky. Where are you from? Austin, Texas. Austin? Oh, yeah. well. It you, was you, hot when I left there, too, yeah, so used, I, didn't, I don't really to get this. to complain much. All right. But I'm leaving from here to go to Seattle. Oh. Well, actually, b between that, I have a shoot at the Grand Canyon, and then I go to Seattle, and they're telling me it's uh, in the high 30s in the Grand Canyon at night while I'm shooting. So I'll be going from one extreme to the other. Interesting. Yeah, it'll be fun. Not really, but. Six week road anyway. trip. Anyway. Six week road trip? Six week road trip. Wow. Yeah. All there right. Go. So, Eric, where are you going after the conference since we're talking about Not stuff that. Let's see. Nowhere. I'm going back to Tampa. <laughs> That's oh, okay. It. Yeah, heading down I 4. All right. I put my life in my own hands. Hey, wow. <laughs> Eric, are, are there any questions yet? Yeah, uh, somebody just said, uh, yay, it's working for me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not a question, that's a statement. Do we have any so. new instructors or anything like that? Do we have any new instructors? Yeah, uh, we so do. So, William's got a question for you. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, why is he not here? No, his question <laughs> is, did you bring some barbecue? Did I bring some barbecue? Hard hitting uh, questions. Well, wow, that's a hard tough hitting one. questions if you're visiting from Texas. Um, no, because if I travel with barbecue, it's never going to make it to the destination. Yeah. Also, it's just, just it's just weird to travel, travel with, with barbecue. So it's what just is weird. Don't your favorite meat. barbecue? Ah. Please don't tell me it's Texas barbecue because that's not real barbecue. Oh, the wow. stuff they serve in you Texas. You know how big that state is. <laughs> it's I know, and every time I go there, I have friends in Texas that take me to gas stations that have. No, they go like, this place no, is a dump, but the barbecue is amazing, no, and they eat it. And I'm like, no, no, I don't there's, know. there's amazing barbecue all over that state, but um, I have a few favorites. There's there's one that's called uh, Franklin Barbecue that most people know oh, yes, in Austin. Yes. Very most good. people that tourists they come to the Salt Lick, and then outside of that, um, yeah, that's good too. There's there's the Godfather of barbecue, which is Louis Mueller's up in Taylor. And so as no, you can see, the nobody knows of any about any of that. Stuff. Those of you who are watching at home, you can see we've run out of ideas. Because yes. <laughs> when we're talking about Texas barbecue, this is how far off we've gotten well, from photography, okay. Photoshop, and Lightroom. I'll bring this around for you though. A reason you might be interested as a guitarist and a photographer and everything. Uh, Mueller's barbecue, which is in Taylor, Texas, for anyone who visits. The inside of that restaurant was the last place that they did Stevie Ray Vaughan's album cover photo shoot inside that barbecue house. And the jukebox is still there and you can sit in Stevie's spot. So as a Fender And I like Stevie. Fan, I like, like Stevie. Stevie a lot, yeah. So And it's a really cool spot. So. We almost did a Stevie Ray Vaughan song tomorrow night. Really? But we didn't. We chickened out. <laughs> Tar parts are hard. They are. All right. Now, Christina has this. She's holding a note. And the note says... Break. Oh, we're going to take a break, but not yet. Darn. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Which is minutes, she said. So, yeah. Let's think. What else do we have? Photography. Oh, we don't anything. do anything new in the photography world. Well, here's something that was kind of interesting that Eric and I were talking about this morning. Our so, army of so the, many people. no, the president of, was it Olympus? Uh, no. Wasn't Panasonic. Ooh. Yeah, it had to be Olympus. No, not I'm Olympus. Gonna, president of Pentax. A, no, Rico. 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 Okay, so the president of this cool. copier company yeah. <laughs> predicted, wow. made a bold prediction. He bold said prediction. he said that oh, in two years that people will stop, all these people will stop buying mirrorless and they're going to switch back to DSLR. To the full frame. Yeah. Now, does Rico. mirrorless, let's, let's just ask this question. Does mirrorless have, does Rico have any mirrorless cameras? No. no. What do you say if you're the only camera company left <laughs> and you don't, don't have, have a mirrorless, mirrorless camera? You go, well, hey, in two years, and we're all it. going back to, you know what else we're going back to? Eight track tapes and cassettes. And copiers. Those are going to come back in copiers <laughs> and Elm fax huge. machines. Fax machines are going to come back in two years in a big, big way. Everybody's going to be faxing. It's going to be awesome. Uh, you know, speaking of that, though, there's another thing. Did you see that new Peak Design travel tripod that came out? 
I did not. Yeah, I saw. I saw that they. Year, wasn't it really yeah. expensive though? Wasn't it like crazy expensive? It is, it is crazy. It is crazy expensive for the carbon fiber one, but yeah. it is carbon okay. fiber. So, so what's I, I? I just saw a headline or something that said, "Hey, they they've come out." Peak Design. Peak Design makes really like luxury bags, like really yep. nice luxury, yep. beautiful bags. I have yep. one. They're they're so super really nice. So really, what it is is it, it compacts down. They designed it so it takes away all the air or all the space around it, so it com right. compacts into itself. So it's about you know where you know we would use like a three-legged thing or something like that. It's right. about half that size because it's they've taken out all that air and made it fit together. Yeah. And then even the ball head fits in inside the, and the chamber. Inside, wow. So it's like one piece. It's really well designed. How much but is it? it, it, it uh, How much is the carbon fiber? I want to say five hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, compare fiber. that to the old Manfrotto. Well, that's like, not tripod that bad. It's not bad. Five hundred dollars for for a tripod, because you know a tripod is not something you replace every year. Mm -mm. A tripod is something you buy and you keep it for eight or ten years. So that's something you nobody know. ever explained to me when I got into shooting and I got out of school was buy a good tripod out of the gate. Oh so yeah. I went through like a cheap tripod oh, yeah. every single Eric, year. Eric has a, a name for that. Yeah, the Behringer tax. <laughs> that's the Behringer tax. That's <laughs> yeah. a tax. Like when you're a musician, you buy yeah, the yeah, Behringer. Yeah. You buy something that's Behringer. Like, oh, There's a the brand, you know. And then I think it was at Photoshop. I bought my first really nice like Manfrotto tripod. Yeah, from the and you floor. still have it, don't you? I do. Yeah, yeah, do. yeah. when you buy a good tripod, they yep. they last I've had forever. It for about 11 All right. Years. Yeah, so it's it's definitely it raised. Uh, they did a Kickstarter and raised in like one day five million dollars. Yeah. It's wow. Like, it's like the size yeah. of two of these bottles. Wow. Like that. All yeah, right. It's crazy. So here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Thank goodness it's time for a break. <laughs> we got a lucky <laughs> lucky break there. Now when we come back, I ask ask questions. Don't just about Photoshop. But anything, because we're going to have a different guest when we come back because we've grown tired of barbecue talk. So when we come back, Free. we're shipping off Mark. Nice. We're bringing in Rob. And uh, Rob is a Lightroom guy. He's a Lightroom guru. He writes for uh, LightroomKillerTips.com and, and for the magazine, Lightroom Magazine. And he's, he's just everywhere. He's everything. Where's he's Rob? teaching here at yep. the conference. There he is. And uh, he's a great guy. And he's also semi-interesting. So that's coming <laughs> up after this break. Rob, say goodbye to Mark. Mark, bye. But I gotta tell you, your barbecue stuff was, it was spot on. It, it was it spot, was spot on. <laughs> it was I've been spot on. Like, that is spot no, on. No, that was really, really good stuff. Real good. It's kind Hard of a, hitting. It's, of all the it's what we were hoping for today out of this show. So good, good job in fulfilling that. <laughs> slow clap, slow clap. We'll be right, we'll be right back. Hi folks, Scott Kelby here. I want to tell you about an email I got, an angry email. So, I, you know it's angry because the subject line says, Mr. Kelby, first, anytime somebody calls me Mr. Kelby, you know it's, you're in trouble. Mr. Kelby, I'm so mad at you. That's what the head, the subject line was. I'm like, oh great. So I go read it and he's like, Mr. Kelby, I, I saw your, your class on photo books and, and I went and made a photo book and I'm just so upset because now I've made 34 photo books and you've got me hooked on these. <laughs> And I went, whew. but that's how it is with photo books. I mean, think about this. All right, we have the shooting part, which is very creative, right? And then we have the editing part, which can be fun and creative. When you start making photo books, you're adding a third leg to this chair. Now you've got this other thing where you're the photo editor. You decide which photos make the book, how big they are, what goes on the left, what goes on the right. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. And Adobe made some changes. Now you can lay out pages any way you want. You can just. Literally, it's like free transform. You can just make the photo whatever size you want. You can have multiple photos. They can overlap one another. You can have grids of 9, 15. You don't have to have a grid at all. You can just design it. I wanted to do a class that takes you from beginning to end, and I'm going to show you how to make it so fast that you'll be able to focus on just the fun. And when you hand somebody that photo book and they get it in their hands and they're going to be like, you, you did this? This is your photography? They're going to be blown away. You're going to be blown away. You're going to have a great, great time doing it. And the whole thing is self-contained right here in Lightroom Classic. If you want to learn a whole bunch about doing photo books, and you'll be able to follow along right with me and do your photo book right that same time, go watch my class. It's called Creating Beautiful Photo Books in Lightroom Classic, and it's exclusively at Kelby One.
you need a tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere, one that is adaptable to any situation, that will prove versatile enough for any shoot, and is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further, Platypod Ultra does it all. Visit platypod.com for more info. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we are back from a merciful break, and uh, Scott Kelby here and Eric Kuna, and we are joined by a very famous man. If you ever read the blog, lightroomkillertips.com, and you should do it daily, Rob is, is one of our columnists, and there's only two, it's just me and Rob. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, we're the two columnists at lightroomkillertips.com, and Rob has a giant uber brain, and he also runs the Lightroom help desk at Kelby One, and he just knows everything about Lightroom. And if I have a thing, something I don't know about Lightroom, I send an email to Rob because I know that Rob knows it because he knows everything. Welcome to the show, Rob. Thank you, Scott. Good to be here. Thank yeah. you. Now, you've been on via Skype before. I have. My, my head has been on at via Skype. It's That's good true. to see the rest of your body <laughs> and to know that you are real and not just a floating head. That's true. Anyway, we're glad to have you here. We have people that are asking questions. Today is open Q&A yeah. day and we're trying to play Stump the Sylvan. Okay. By the way, no one's ever won this game. The guy on Jeopardy <laughs> could not beat him when it comes to... I don't know. He's good. Lightroom. He's very good, He's but he doesn't know that much about Lightroom. All right. So here, let's here kick we it go. Off. Let's kick All it right. off. We have so a Daniel, legitimate question. Daniel's asking, Lightroom question. How do I change the color space in Lightroom? Dun dun dun. Um, well, you can't totally change it. You can change the histogram to display in another color space, but you can't change the underlying. So what is the underlying color space that you can only use? It's the it's a variant of a Profoto RGB named Melissa RGB. So you can think of it as Profoto RGB. Wow, that's 16 -bit, going deep right there. Yeah, 16-bit yeah. color space, um, and it has a uh, sRGB uh, tone curve. All right, let's ask you another question. Yeah. Melissa, what's her last name? Uh, we're friends on Facebook, Melissa. I hope you're not watching, uh, but it's been Bet a while. She <laughs> Bet hey, she Jeb's is. Bet she is. Hey, Deb's got a question a while. I'll come back Deb's got a that. question. <laughs> Hold on, we have Deb. a live question yeah, Deb's from question our studio is, audience. Mm. Deb from Boston. Deb, you sucker from Boston. Question is, what's Rob's favorite spot in New Hampshire to photograph? What's your favorite spot in New Hampshire? Wow. Um, that's a good question. Well, my most common spot would be my backyard. Uh, not currently open to the public. Are you but, sure, uh, Rob? But that's where I spend most of my time. It you, is. Why wouldn't you let the public in? Are you like, <laughs> are you the get off my lawn guy? Uh, is that you? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, let's see, favorite other spot would probably be along the coast. Down a little bit. New Hampshire has about this much coastline compared to Florida. That's about this much coastline. So we've got about 15 miles of coastline. Oh. So it's pretty, if you like rocks. We have 15 miles of coastline in this convention center. <laughs> exactly. It's, yeah. it's all over, all right. So uh, it's rare that we have someone sitting in our studio audience that actually goes on to Facebook and sends us <laughs> yeah. to know. But thank you, Deb. That's that's support right there. Yeah. That's thanks, and then, uh, thanks. Kathy, She's got our back. Kathy Bateson has a comment. She said, "Hey, Mark Rodriguez, just seen you chilling on the sofa." Hey, Mark. <laughs> and let's see. Hey, why isn't Kathy Bateson here? That's a good question, Kathy. Why aren't you here? Yeah, Kathy, from Ireland. And then Sandy <laughs> bit the bullet this morning and ordered a Canon's, Canon EOS R. So oh, she bought an EOS R. Yeah. All right, yeah. sweet. How you, Good how luck you with that. Liking it? You still liking it? Me? Yeah. You know, not really. Yeah. Yeah, I love you my. You give it up for the Rico? No, <laughs> the, the Rico DSLR. I'm waiting two years and I want to sell my Canon EOS R and go to Rico for a DSLR. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> However, their copiers, outstanding. Hey, trivia, yes. my first, ready? My first laser printer was a Rico. I couldn't afford an Apple laser writer, $2,600, a Rico, and it reeked <laughs> Okay. All right, so Rose has got a question for you. Um, 
if uh, you bought a new computer to use Lightroom, what graphics card would you recommend? The most expensive one you can afford. I, I don't know the names of them. Um, <laughs> But spend money indiscriminately. Well, is what you Rob know, is if saying. you want to future-proof yourself, you can see if you're using Photoshop, using Lightroom, they're taking more and more advantage of the GPU. So, I just got a MacBook Pro, and I went with the Vega 20 or whatever that yeah, like the most expensive yeah, yeah. graphic most expensive card one. they would sell. And so, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna take advantage of these technologies that they are putting into the software, you got to have the got to have the hardware. All right. All right. Uh, William's asking. Why does Adobe keep changing the name of Lightroom? That's an excellent question. I don't have the answer. But uh, I can tell you it's a sore spot around <laughs> here. I can tell you that. As yeah. educators who are trying to communicate as clearly so as we can, it of drives Lightroom us. what am I using? Yeah, so it is, from the perspective of having job security on the help desk, it's good. Uh, because every one of my questions really has to be start with, what version of, your, of Lightroom are you using? And then I have to then ask it a second time because they'll say Lightroom CC. And that doesn't really yeah, and you narrow go, it down. So yes. is it the new CC right. or the old CC? Right. Do you, is your stuff stored in the cloud? Is it stored on the exactly. desktop? It's, it's yeah. a lot of questions. You know what I usually do for that? What? I always go, do you see th across the top of your thing, library, develop, yeah. print? Yeah. I, if you see the word print at all, you're not <laughs> using Lightroom <laughs> CC. True enough. Yep. Because Lightroom CC does not print. It doesn't print at all. You know what happens if you hit, hit Command P? Nothing. It doesn't even bring up the, yeah. the OS dialog. It's so. Uh, so why are they doing it? I think my best answer as to why is I think people at Adobe live in the future, like 20 years in the future. The future. And they're planning for that moment. And the rest of us are still trying to catch up. And I, I don't know how else. I don't know how else they're making those decisions. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. That's yeah, it. Sounds. That yeah. sounds. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're trying to keep your relationship with yeah, Adobe yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's classic. Was I, a great name. Yeah, classic's a really good name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like if you say, "Oh, I want a classic car." Does that mean a cool new car? No. 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 Anyways, uh, Piotr's asking, Scott, have you heard WMC London is canceled? Is that? No. All right, there you go. Is, are you serious? Yeah, he asked that. No. Don't. So I'm supposed to speak in London <laughs> in a few weeks. I totally think he's pulling your leg. He's there. pulling my leg. He yeah. better be pulling my leg. I'm so gonna go look at him. So Johan's asking a question. Any news on the new prices for Lightroom and Photoshop for the coming year? Oh, after they did that test. Yeah. 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 So yeah. so what do you think? So Adobe Any did. New, uh, here's what. This is this is just my take on it. This yeah. is not from a, this is not official, because they don't tell me jack. My take on it is this: Adobe was testing the prices to see how people would react. I don't know about you, Rob, but I would say they didn't react well. No, no. And they I reacted. would say that the results of their test <laughs> were not what they were hoping to get. Yeah. And I would be surprised to see uh, a price increase at all in the coming year. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. I've not, no one at Adobe has said yeah. that's what it's gonna be. It but I would say- like the, I mean, it feels like that. Like yeah, that. I would be surprised if they looked at that and said, "Yeah, people are cool with it." <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah, no. it was. Uh, cool with it. Yeah, yeah, Everybody no, I'm, I'm going to think. I would be. I would just say this. I would be very, very surprised at this point to see them raise even a dollar. Right. I would be shocked to see it. All right, so Rob, what's your answer to that? Well, I, I agree. I mean, I think sometimes I feel like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, and somebody thought it would be a good idea to test that in that way, and I don't know. I don't know the process that happened, but they definitely got a reaction. They definitely got feedback. They got instant they feedback. Got feedback. They yeah. got massive feedback. And I guess that's a good thing. So, yeah, no, I hope they don't do it. All right, so Peter's asking, how can Adobe justify not having printing in Lightroom CC? Because Lightroom CC is for children. <laughs> that's what it stands for. That's what it stands for. Yeah. Classic for children, mm. CC. No, uh, I think that, th that that classic is kind of, a classic I think first is misnamed. Yeah, pro, for sure. If, if I had been named head of naming, <laughs> at, because it, this is true fact, the company that came up with the name Lightroom Classic, the same company they hired, uh, that Mac Fun hired to come up with Skylum <laughs> as their name. <laughs> Not true, but Not true. it should, might as yeah. well be. Anyway, so, I think that Lightroom should be called Lightroom Professional. Sure. 
It is it is aimed at a market mm -hmm. that has grown up with Lightroom. Yeah. Uh, they're they're serious full time professionals using that. The problem is when you become a serious full time professional, you have a lot of images, and the storage prices for for you to go to Lightroom CC are crazy. So. Uh, for me, it would be my my payment to have Lightroom CC, just Lightroom CC, not the whole Creative Cloud, would be $1,200 a year. I already figured it out. And I don't have that much. I talk to people that, that laugh at how little. They're like, you only have like 10 terabytes of stuff? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, God, I shoot that for breakfast, you know. Yeah. So apparently I have a low amount, and it would be $1,200 a year. But uh, I think that um, the CC part is for a different generation where you're shooting on your phone a lot and you're not thinking about print like clients would be paying clients and things like that. Your main output is Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, and I think that, that's the market it's for. And, and I would just say, and this is just me talking, this is not official Adobe stuff, but uh, you, you look at the Apple Photos app, you look at Google Photos, what does Adobe have to compete with that? Nothing, now they have Lightroom CC. Right. That's, that's who it's for, that's, that's who I would say that is that market and it, when I was in charge of naming, I would call the other one Lightroom Cloud. Yep. I would name Lightroom CC Lightroom Cloud, and I would name Lightroom Classic Lightroom Professional. Yeah. Or at the very least, Lightroom Desktop. Yeah, well, you know, they had a code name for Lightroom CC that, you know, they dropped the CC, so now right. it's just Lightroom. It's just Lightroom. Course, right? But it was Nimbus. Mm -hmm. I, I love was, Nimbus. I thought that was a clever yeah. name, and it, it, yeah, it, it told like you nimble. what it was. And yeah. you know what? what? One day, Eric and I were sitting, we were getting ready to do a webcast, and the phone rings, and it was, it was somebody at Adobe, uh, who will remain nameless, <laughs> and he said, we're thinking of changing the name to this and then the other, and I said, what's wrong with Nimbus? That's yeah. a great, because yep. Nimbus, I it's a type that. of cloud, right? right? It's yeah. a puffy little So cloud. Lightroom Nimbus, I think, would have been a great name, yep. uh, you know, it puffy cloud, been. and... You know, it also sounds kind of futuristic, like, ooh, you're yeah. using Nimbus, yeah. ooh, Nimbus, yeah. I think, so anyway. No, 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 no. But, uh, that was too easy. Uh, anyway, we're, we're going we're gonna to have to take a break because, because I just saw this. Yeah. <laughs> so, Rob, thank you for being My on pleasure. here. Thanks for having me. We have a special surprise guest coming up next. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Wow, there's like a lull.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Oh. The funny thing is, they've been doing that the whole time we've been gone. Yeah, that, that, that applause was going the entire, entire break, time. the whole time. Jason had them going. All right, hey, look who we got. We have a special guest on the set. The famous, the Ultraman, Mark Rodriguez, who, by the way, yes, Mark Rodriguez. <laughs> so, so Mark is a Photoshop wizard, has won a million awards, and he also has a, an, I wouldn't say a starring role, but almost a co-starring role in the keynote movie that starts off the keynote tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you were fantastic oh, in that. Thank you, sir. You were really, uh, really good. And tomorrow mm -hmm. morning, you'll see the whole thing. Oscar, we spent <laughs> We spent two days <laughs> shooting uh, on location. And uh, it's it's the tomorrow morning, we start the, kick off the keynote, keynote with this uh, movie. We always start off with a movie. And uh, when we first started editing it, Mark, you don't know this, but it was 26 minutes long. <laughs> we got it down uh, tremendously from there. So it's now it's a nice little short movie. But uh, Mark was in it, had a great starring role. But, but Mark, at, here at Photoshop World, is, is doing something very special. So uh, one of the things that we do on the expo floor is we have shoots set up. So photographers can go and shoot some stuff they might not normally get to shoot. And uh, Hilmar Smith is here last year. Hilmar set up an entire 1940s <laughs> gas station last year. And she had a model in mm -hmm. themed clothes and all. And it was great. And across the hall from her, right, I mean across the aisle from her, Mark had set up a... How do you describe it? it a horrifying, <laughs> a horrifying, horrifying thing. But it actually a person it, in an electric chair. It was chair. a person in an electric chair, but it was really good the way they did it. It yeah. really people were sharing pictures all over yeah. because where else do you get to get an electric chair? So so Mark is back this only year. Only in it was, Florida. Only in Florida. Yeah. It was such a hit. So Mark is back here. Can you give us a hint about what the uh, what you have planned for Mark? Just a hint. Don't give the whole thing away. It's a little dark again. And no. <laughs> But not as dark. Guillotine? Uh, no. Have you seen it? Yet? Have you seen it? Yet? I have not seen it. It's incredible. Is it incredible? Well, thank Him you. And, and Hilmar. I mean, it's really it's like you're at, like Disney. Wow. It's awesome. It's a big so if you're here at the show, <laughs> if you're here at the show, <laughs> like you go. It's and all. And it's like in the uh, in the mm -hmm. keynote movie. There's Hilmar right over there. I think Juan's going to hit her with the, uh, the B camera there. There's Hilmar. <laughs> Hi, Hilmar. So she's in the keynote movie as well tomorrow where she's in it. Uh, you never actually got in it, did you? No, no but there. And sadly, if you go to their website like we just did on the break, it says that it's been canceled. It's been postponed for a year. I actually read it. Oh, it's been postponed, oh, yeah. postponed, for, postponed a for a year. Postponed for a year. It, but still, that's not a good sign. It's not good. But no. boom, so I'll be staying probably at Dave Clayton's house on the floor. <laughs> well, do you use Capture One? I do not. No one does. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, I, I actually have Capture One. It's kind of a neat program, enough at Capture One, honestly. Now, we right. have a Capture One class on Kelby One, and it's quite a good one. If you go to Kelby One and just search for Capture One, we did do a class yeah, on Capture it's One. It uses the capture, capture One every day. Yeah, they use it. They, it's their livelihood, so yeah. they're, they're expert at it. They, and it's a really good class, because so, I did take a look at it. Uh, Leslie's asking, any hints at new camera, camera, Canon camera models? Uh, I mean, I have the same hint to everybody. Is if you go to the rumor shows, uh, any of the rumor sites, canonrumors.com, um, a confirmed rumor, uh, like three big lenses, like so, sports lenses for it, like a, I think it was a, a, a 300, 300 and a 400. And a, I shoot Canon. You shoot Canon? What yeah. do you got? Uh, 5D. 5D, there you go. Mark III. Course. It does what it needs to do. But so you know what's interesting? So if you look at a Mark III and a Mark II and the original 5D and the Mark IV, they all look the same. <laughs> There's no cosmetic <laughs> difference. Like you could not, the only thing that's different is the number. I mean, the Ooh, body that, is yeah. almost <laughs> exactly identical. So that's what's kind of nice about the EOS R. It does have a little different look. You feel like at least you got a new camera. Cause mm -hmm. I think if they come out with a five, a Mark V, at some point they will, it's going to look exactly like the Mark IV and the Mark III, so. Mm -hmm. All right. You would hope it looked more like an R. And, and so Mark is also super Photoshop, mega shark, really incredibly good. It's won every award you can win for Photoshop. Thanks, sir. And hey, where can they go see your stuff? Uh, GodriguezArt.com. So it's Godriguez, G-O-D, 
R and there's an R, R -I -D and a bunch of letters. Art. It's a different. <laughs> it's, he's from a different place. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's it's very hard to spell. But yes. if you go there, you're going to see some really amazing Photoshop stuff. But and this is I'm I'm telling you this just because, as a compassion. Do not go to his website at night. Yes. He's got some scary ass stuff. Go in the day with all the windows open and the lights on when you go to his site and you'll get through it. But if you think about midnight, I think I'm gonna go see that, what's that guy's name? Don't. Mm -hmm. Sleep on it and wait till the next day yeah, don't so you don't have dreams. Don't say my name three, three times in a row. Either. Yeah, don't say his name three times in a row, he says, into mm -hmm. a mirror. Into a mirror, it's yeah. bad. Yeah, it's, it, it, bad things happen. But, uh, you, but, but I will say this, you have a great sense of humor about your dark stuff. That's, it is. That's what I like to be, like to have it. I mean, it, dark stuff's fun, and or it, it can be fun. You know, it can be dark, but still have a sense of humor, like like you said, and uh, it could still convey you know a storyline and stuff like that. So I like to have fun with it. Can I tell you which one of yours gives me the most nightmares? What's that? Which one do you think it is first? The clown. Yeah, the clown. Yeah. He's got the creepiest. Can you? Oh, you can't pull it up. No, I cannot. No, we don't have that kind of connectivity. He's got a picture of a clown. Which is picture. It's a picture of a clown. clown. And now, are you the? Are you the clown? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you are the um, subject. Mostly, yeah. Like he does. self portrait Yeah, they're like self-portrait stuff. And he's got a clown, and he has one of those fake bang guns. But there's confetti shooting out of the clown, and you go, "Well, that sounds kind of funny." Wait till you see it. It'll freak you out. Again, daytime viewing only. Do not let the kids see this. They will have a clown thing the rest of their whole life. <laughs> but uh, hey, uh, it, oh, okay, we have three minutes until the break. So, so Mark, yes, where are you from? I'm from Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. I'm a Florida boy. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, not, nothing good comes from Tampa. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> Florida. So we're Cuban from Tampa. Food. <laughs> Cuban, Cuban food. food. And we have, by, uh, right down the street from our office, we have an amazing Cuban restaurant, which really doesn't matter to you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, hey, I do want to say something. Shout out. So if you're here at Photoshop World, and for all you guys who are listening out here in the audience today, so our friend Robbie Pisco, who's a friend of the grid, you've probably seen him in the forums and talking to us and all, uh, he's never been to America, and he's here for Photoshop World. Awesome. So he arrived mm. yesterday, and God bless him, he thinks it's cool here. <laughs> Guy's from Venice. He lives in Venice, and he's like, everything's so beautiful here. I'm like, are you nuts? <laughs> He's like, he's like, I love this. What do you call this? I go, like, I4. And he's like, this Concrete. is amazing. No, no, but he does. He's, he's, he's really psyched. He's like, he th he's like, man, everything's so beautiful here. Now, he, he landed. My brother picked him up. He's friends with my brother, too. And so uh, he's staying with my brother. And my brother lives on Clearwater, right on Clearwater Beach. Okay. So he's, he landed in like, ooh, it's beautiful and it's awesome. And so, you know, by the time he gets to I4, it'll all fall apart. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he's going to be here tomorrow. He speaks English. And he's a very, very good travel photographer. And he's also a master sergeant in the Italian army. And has Impressive. been in for 27 years. Awesome guy. And we have to make him feel at home because he's never been here before. So, and he's really excited. And he's like 50 something years old, never been to America. We're excited to have him here. So uh, we're go. gonna, we're basically gonna do what we do to everyone. We're gonna tie him up and leave him out by the road. <laughs> So uh, anyway, if you guys see Robbie Pisco, and you'll know him because you're gonna go, that guy looks Italian, that's him. He's the guy that looks Italian at Photoshop World. All right, we are gonna take a break. When we come back, we have no guests. It's just me and Eric crying softly into our <laughs> microphones. <laughs> Image restoration has always been one of the most rewarding things you can do in Photoshop because it's not just, you know, like fixing a tear, it's more fixing a memory and then you present it to either a family member or a client and they just look at it and, you know, their eyes fill with tears or whatever it is. It's just, of anything I've done in Photoshop, it's by far the most rewarding. In this course, you'll learn how to deal with many of the common problems like faded black and white photographs, faded color, tears, rips, unwanted elements like tape and writing. We'll even talk about how to deal with missing body parts. If you need to fix someone's face or replace a hand, you can just borrow it from another photograph. Back in the old days, many photographs were tiny like this. So the challenge is how on earth do you take something like this and turn it into an eight by 10 photograph? So we'll talk about how to calculate the correct resolution so it's easy to take a small photograph and make it big. 
it's definitely a skill that takes some time to learn and really get good at it. And once you do, then it becomes a skill you can share with other people and repair the photographs for other families and help them restore their memories as well. Generations to come will look at these photographs and go, wow, that was taken in 1902 and it looks pretty darn good. If you want to learn key techniques to bring life back into old photos, please join me for my new class on image restoration only on Kelby1.com. I found that there are common questions that come up in how to start a sports photography business. Not just how to take the pictures, but how to do the business of it in order to get published and uh, hopefully make a career out of it and be paid. And we bring an audience in and they would ask their questions, I will answer them and we will see if we can get to the bottom of how to make a living in sports photography. I think what the audience uh, will get out of this class is a better understanding of uh, sort of the progressions from shooting like youth to high school to college to the pros and then actually starting to use some lighting as well and move into the commercial sector of the industry. There's a repetitive pathway in all of this that I think will be very valuable to people in learning how to better uh, conduct their business or even start a business in sports photography. Come join me at my new class on kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. All right, we are back. What's interesting is this is, this is all the people that are at Photoshop World. This is the <laughs> total attendance. Now, today is pre-conference day, so lots of people are out on location doing location shoots or in the classrooms. Uh, they come the day before for like a like extended in-depth kind of thing. And so that's what, where everybody is today. But of course, a lot of people won't be coming in until tonight. Uh, and tonight, there's nothing tonight. No, there's a party there's a tonight. Yeah, yeah, there's a meetup meet tonight. So there's a meetup tonight where we rocks. are at the at the Rocks Lounge here at the uh, the Hyatt in Orlando mm -hmm. at the Hyatt Regency. And uh, so a couple things. Let's give away. Now they swapped out my stunt book for an actual copy of the real printed book here, which is about two weeks late because the first time they printed it, the printer messed up something horribly so bad that they actually went ahead and reprinted the entire book last weekend. Here it is. I smell that, Mark. Mmm, how's that new book smell? Yeah, it's got the new book smell. We're going to give this away to someone right here in our studio audience. So Christina had come, had come up with some method to pick a, a winner. Yeah, there's a method for to this the book. This is like the first <laughs> copy too. It's like special, and I will sign it. Uh, I won't sign it with my name. I'll sign it with Mark's name. No, but I will. I will be glad to sign this for you. Who's our winner? Our winner is I know him, Andy Lay. Hey, Andy, you won the landscape book. All right, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And, and by the way, Andy, Andy is, was voted least likely guy to need a landscape book. L Andy is a lights out shooter. So Andy, you should find someone that doesn't know landscape <laughs> photography and give that to her, because Andy is the boss. He's also, coincidentally, a Sony shooter who was, in, who was in my Venice workshop and saved two other people at my Venice workshop who bought their Sonys the day before the workshop. And without Andy, they would still be in Venice in jail. So thank you, Andy, enjoy the book. All righty, uh, we have, this is Dave Cross's, what? yep, that's Dave. Dave Cross's shirt worn probably just a few times. few times. So this is going to someone watching. Smells like maple syrup. Smells like maple syrup, it smells like maple syrup <laughs> and <laughs> Canadian bacon, which we know is not really bacon at all. Um, who's our winner for the Dave Cross shirt? Michael Dow. Michael Dow, you've won a Dave Cross shirt. And is Michael here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Michael, this is good stuff for you. It's going to be a little large, Michael, <laughs> but uh, everybody wants extra large. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. You bet. All right. So we also, uh, we also, who who does not have a ticket to the party tomorrow night? Anybody? Yeah, she's got the names. You've got the names already? All right. Yeah. So we have we have two party tickets for the after hours party. Hey, look, they put my picture on the party ticket. Look at that. You know, this is my own employees doing that, so it doesn't count. <laughs> That's luck. Sam Barron, you got a ticket to the party for tomorrow? All right. Sam, come on up. You're going to the party? I'll be dressed similarly to this. Thank you. So <laughs> I'll see you there. 
Oh, and we have another know. after hours party ticket to Alfonso Garcia. All right. All right. All right. We'll see you at the party. Thank you. Don't. <laughs> and don't get too liquored up. Okay. And what else? Do we have anything <laughs> other important things? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Uh -huh. So when Sk Skip Cohen was on our show, I don't know. Would you see the, the episode with Skip on? I did not. Well, Skip is like a master of the business side of photography, and he wanted to offer someone a, like an hour of business consulting. Like he will look at your business and your portfolio and all that stuff and give you advice. And Skip is just brilliant at it. He runs a whole training thing for that. And the winner is Daryl Johnson. So Daryl Johnson, wherever you are, you've won. Right there. there he is. Now, now, also, another interesting trivia thing about Daryl. He makes an appearance and has a speaking line in the stars in the movie. Look for that. And Christina will make sure you get the, she'll look you up. It is, it's a great, he has a great line. He will, he will bring the house down tomorrow. Thanks. All right. All right, so that was. Yeah. I know that line. <laughs> It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a weird movie tomorrow. It's going to be weird. Anyway, uh, so we have a few minutes to, to, uh, to kill <laughs> because we can't end early because we always end late. Well, I got something then. Whoa. I got something. I got something. What do you got? So speaking of weird and funny, right? So we we're talking about Rico earlier. You know, yeah. so do you see what Leica came out with? No. They came out with a $24,000 Python skinned camera designed by Lenny Kravitz. $24,000 Leica. Well, that sounds like a reasonable price. $24,000 <laughs> for a Leica? For a Leica. Mm -hmm. yeah. Python skin yeah. designed by Lenny Kravitz. Yep. You know, when I think of who I want to design my camera, first thing I think, <laughs> Lenny, Lenny Kravitz. Kravitz. Top of my yeah. list. Are you going to go, go my way? way? Oh, oh yeah. look at that. Jinx. <laughs> You owe him a coat. <laughs> yeah. All right, we have six minutes. If you're watching out there, and I know that what two else? of you are. <laughs> We're so find you. let's see. The big news uh, this week in astrophotography land is all the astrophotographers are on an uproar because of SpaceX. Because they released all those. They released 60s. all those satellites, and they're all worried that they're going to ruin their shots now. Um, so rest easy. They're going to go to a higher orbit. You're not even going to see them in your shots. But boy, everybody was freaking out earlier in the week in the astro. Do you know why they world. were freaking out? Because we are programmed to freak out over every little thing. Yeah. If anything happens, our job is to be outraged. Well, I was kind of freaking out myself too. So yeah. I'm, I'm outraged just at being in this uh, convention <laughs> center. Can't you just clone them out? What, what, you what? can. They kind of actually end up looking like shooting stars. It's well, that's cool. nice. Yeah. That's a nice thing. It is. So <laughs> what else you got going on Let's over see. there? Let's see what else is going Eric's on. Eric's news roundup. Uh, hey, Sony, number two now in revenue behind Canon. They oh, Ooh, surpassed so Nikon. Nikon fell to number three. Yeah, Nikon fell to number three. So Sony's number two right now. So Jason, Rico, our director, though. is is a Sony guy. Oh yes, that's, he is. <laughs> he is. He's a diehard. A couple of claps there. Yeah. <laughs> that was that's too. I, isn't Hilmar? Didn't Hilmar go? No, Hilmar's an icon, didn't you? Oh yeah. Oh sorry, yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah, they they fell to number three, but Jason's still holding on to that. But Rico's making a making that, a move up. Yeah, Rico's <laughs> Rico, Rico's on the move. Point, they are on point the move. One. All right, so we actually we've completely run out of things to talk about. We've done our giveaways. Yeah, I don't know what else I, I think got. it's time to pull the plug on this show. I got like the bail things there. I yeah, he, when you start going to Eric's news list, you know you're yeah, in trouble. That's nothing. So we're that's gonna have to wrap this show up just out of mercy, out of an act of mercy. We're gonna end the show. I do want to thank our guest Mark Rodriguez who was here. Make sure if you're at the show, you go by Mark's uh, Mark's. Uh, 108. 108 is your booth 108. number. 108 to, to shoot some. I don't even know what it is, but I imagine. It was, I, he, I asked him to tell me on the break, and he's like, "You should go by and see it." So mm -hmm. I, I, I know it's it. going to be naughty. <laughs> um, so there's it's that. Cool. Is it cool? It's cool. It's got to be. It's got to be. All right. And then uh, I also want to thank Rob Silva and Mark Heaps, who are our semi-interesting guests today. <laughs> and uh, thanks to, uh, to uh, Eric for coming up with some news that ate up approximately four four minutes and nine <laughs> yeah, seconds. That's all right. Also, that's thanks all to our studio audience. Thank you guys for being here today. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank 
And uh, if you get a chance, keep, keep an eye on my blog at scottkelby.com. We'll be putting up sh pictures and stuff from the event. We are not streaming the live keynote because we're doing two Photoshop Worlds this year. And uh, we'll be streaming the second keynote from Las Vegas in August. So you have to be here to watch the keynote, but we will have tons of pictures up on them in courtesy of the amazing Brad Moore, who will be our event Brad. photographer here. Yeah, yep. brad -o. Anyway, thanks, guys. Thanks to our crew here who went through a lot of trouble to put this up. Thanks to Jason, the Sony user. Oh, yeah, dark, Jason. Dark request man himself. Thanks to Christina, Juan, Ron, Juan, the whole still crew. Still the cannon holdout. Still the cannon holdout. And we'll catch you guys next week on The Grid. Take care, everybody.